government has announced new rules to prevent local councils organising boycotts of goods or services from other countries. Matthew Hancock, the minister responsible, made the announcement in Israel, which groups here are lobbying local councils not to invest in or trade with. We're issuing new guidance to public authorities that when they buy, you can't indiscriminately say that you're not going to buy from whole countries. We're a free trading nation. We've got international commitments and the policies on the countries that we trade with are set for the whole country by the Foreign Office. They can't be set council by council. There is a movement to boycott goods coming from Israel. I think that's wrong. We have one foreign policy as a country. It's set by the Foreign Office, and it isn't for councils to decide who they're going to boycott. Well, back in the 1980s, Margaret Thatcher tried something similar to prevent a campaign by councils to boycott South Africa over apartheid. But how does this fit with the present government's professed belief in localism? To debate that, Douglas Murray, Associate Director of the think tank the Henry Jackson Society, which argues for an open and engaged foreign policy and is in favour of the market economy, and Richard Kemp, a Liberal Democrat and former leader of Liverpool Council. What does Councillor Kemp first make of the government's announcement? Let's be quite clear that I and local government in no way challenge the right of central government to declare treaties, to go to war, to engage in overt or covert diplomacy. That's their job. My job, with a local mandate, is to make sure that the money that I'm responsible for, and I'm responsible for different types of money in different ways, is spent according to the wishes of the people that elected me. Because this makes us different from anyone else in the public sector except central government. I have my own mandate and I have my own accountability back to local but, people and it's to them that I respond, not Mr Cameron. But at what point does a local council leader or a directly elected mayor, as the government is encouraging a lot of cities now to have, at what point can that person claim a mandate for making a decision that would, for example, involve saying we won't take any oil from Venezuela or fruit from an undemocratic regime? We have an absolute right, and we'd be far more accountable than the government. The government are not putting this forward as primary legislation. It wasn't in a manifesto. But if in Liverpool I decided I wanted to suggest we had disinvested in any way from any other country, I have to go to the council, I have to debate it publicly, and then I'd be accountable to the people of Liverpool who might accept that decision or might decide to vote me out. That's accountability. That's democracy. Douglas Murray of the Henry Jackson Society, this is a government that talks a lot about its commitment to localism. Isn't this inconsistent with that? Uh, you could say that. This government has a rather mixed view about localism. However, I think that whatever your views on the localism agenda, I think it's worth bearing a couple of things in mind. The first is that this will save an awful lot of local authority time, and that's to the benefit of taxpayers. There is no reason, if you're paying your taxes in Liverpool or anywhere else, that your local authority should be making grandstanding statements about foreign policy. It's a huge waste of everyone's time, and there is absolutely nothing to be gained from it. But there if is... they don't like it, they can just vote them out. Well, it's not quite as easy as that. Once people are in, they can use the years they have to make other statements and make other grandstanding points. I think it's very important to bear another thing in mind here, though, which is that the nature of the BDS campaign is... This is the campaign for disinvestment in Israel because of... Boycott, the, divestment, sanctions. And, and, that is, and that is about the argument about the status of the occupied territories and whether goods there should be sold and not, traded internationally. It tends not to be limited to the occupied territories, but the BDS movement is a movement that singles out the sole Jewish state in the world for reprehensible smear and maltreatment. And it's a clearly racist movement because, among other things, it never does this with any other state. So I think it's a very important thing. So in other words, it's really a, you think the government's only doing this because of that? Uh, I have no idea whether that's the case. But, but I think, can you think, I think of other examples? Because that, in a sense, gets well, to the heart of this, it, doesn't it, it? If this is a problem that exists mm. in local authorities around the country, you can see what the government is doing. Otherwise, you might question, is this mm. not a sledgehammer to crack a nut? It is something that's happening elsewhere. There is a very clear push from uh, very extreme movements in the UK to try to pressure local authorities on the Israel thing in particular. But I think it's very important... But it could to be applied in... to other, other countries, it, you it, think, it, potentially. It could be. It's noticeable that nobody bothers. But I think a very important point to make is this. You know, the anti-Israel movement 
is a movement which is highly, highly sectarian. And we could imagine down the road movements that, for instance, said we don't want to have any financial dealings with Pakistan because of its treatment of secularists and free thinkers. We don't want to have or any financial uh, uh, treat or Christians or we don't have any treatment with China because it's run by the Communist Party and so on. You could foresee that. One of the repercussions of that is that in the 21st century, local authority politics in Britain get mired in sectarianism to an extent that most of us would hope could never happen again. But that is what this movement is the forefront of. Richard Kemp, the government may actually be helping you. It may be protecting you in local government for coming under quite severe pressure from people and communities and campaign groups in your area that might kind of divert what you're trying to do and influence you in a way that's not perhaps appropriate. Well, that's very kind of them. But we shouldn't get trapped down a rabbit hole because what's being proposed isn't much to do with Israel or, for that matter, foreign investment or disinvestment. That's a tiny amount that we do. This is an attack on our ability to ethically invest or disinvest. So I come back to the fact that I have lead responsibility for the LGA for England, for public health. I think it's entirely right that we should say we will not invest in alcohol companies and tobacco companies. That, apparently, will be part of the same statutory instrument. And it isn't just about Israel. I doubt that this would affect a single penny's worth of investment. But in Liverpool and every other town hall in the country, we're talking about the effects of tobacco. We're talking about the effects of alcohol and obesity. If, 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 it, if it were the case that there were was not a pound of British investment that was going to be affected, then you'd have to ask why on earth is hours and hours of council time being taken up in the UK by Where? grandstanding politicians Where? who are elected Where? in order to address... It, it, we've seen uh, BDS movements across the country. We saw one in Leicestershire recently. How, how um, many councils we saw, have we actually saw a case in Leicestershire the other day. Issue. Can I just make this point? This, this is, is a very true. important point and you may want to ignore it, but you can ask your mates in Barcelona. There is council time being taken up in the UK because activist politicians who are meant to be looking after local authority issues instead use their time to grandstand on the international stage. That isn't why they're there. It's a very useful thing for government to save you all a bit of your own time and you can give us better value for money. Douglas Murray and Richard Kemp. Columbine is still a name that resonates. 